Tom Buffington was chief of the Cherokee Nation in the late 1800s and early 1900s. As we take a look back at his life and political career, it's a history that sheds some light on where we are as a tribe today. Cherokee Chief Thomas Mitchell Buffington led his people through a tumultuous period that almost spelled the end of Cherokee tribal government and nearly made him the last chief of the Cherokees. Buffington was born in Cherokee Nation's Going Snake District in Indian Territory near modern-day Westville, Oklahoma. What happened, the folks came over the Trail of Tears, the Buffington family, they moved in here in 1838. And then they built this house here, and uh, Tom Buffington was born here in uh, October the 15th in 1855. After being educated through the Old Baptist Mission School in the Cherokee Male Seminary, he became a farmer and settled near modern-day Venita, Oklahoma. He was six foot six and weighed about 300 pounds, they said, so he was an enormous guy. Everybody had great respect for him. At age 34, Buffington entered tribal politics as a Cherokee Nation district judge. Though he lacked experience in law, he was very popular among the local people. In 1891, he was elected to the Cherokee Nation Senate, becoming president of the Senate just a few months later. And in 1891, the chief died and the deputy chief died within a week of each other. And so they appointed Tom Buffington as the new chief for the time being, temporarily. The Cherokee Tribal Council appointed a new chief just nine days later. But those nine days proved enough to inspire Buffington to seek office once again. In 1899, he decided he liked the job, and so he ran for it and was elected chief of the Cherokees, and he was 1899 until 1903. He was, uh, that four-year period, he was chief of the Cherokees. In 1898, the year before he was elected, the U.S. federal government called for communal Cherokee tribal land to be broken up and allotted to individual Cherokee citizens. This action would dismantle the Cherokee tribal government priming Cherokee Nation to be absorbed into the state of Oklahoma. Rather than resist this change, Chief Buffington took a controversial stance, one that divides Cherokee opinion of him to this day. He pushed hard for statehood, and uh, he, he felt that it was just a waste of time. All the old full bloods really were mad at him because they wanted to fight, keep on fighting. He said, guys, this makes no sense at all. Let's uh, stop fighting and let's get this land awarded to all the Cherokees. On two occasions, Chief Buffington traveled to Washington, D.C. to negotiate terms of allotment. He had first met with uh, President Harrison earlier before, telling him the Cherokees were getting a raw deal, and he came up with a big, long list of things that they need to do, and Harrison told him, you're just standing in the way of a big glacier, and you're going to get crushed if, if you keep pushing this, because we're not going to do it. It's said the chief later remarked to another Cherokee official, if he had been anyone other than the President of the United States, I would have crushed him with my bare hands. Back home in Indian Territory, the chief appointed three Cherokee senators to create another treaty, doubling down on his demands. Chief Buffington returned to Washington in 1902 to the office of a new president, Theodore Roosevelt. What is said to have taken place has since become legend. He knew Roosevelt liked strong people. So he took a big old horseshoe with him. And finally, when they signed the treaty, he glared at President Teddy Roosevelt and said, Mr. President, if you break this treaty, and when he's glaring at him, he straightened out that horseshoe, threw it down the floor of the Oval Office, and turned around and walked out. The treaty, while perpetually controversial among Cherokees, was accepted by the United States Dawes Commission with approval from President Roosevelt. Cherokee individuals each received either 160 acres of pasture or 80 acres of agricultural land, as well as a cash payment and full surface and mineral rights to their allotments. While not a perfect compromise, Chief Buffington truly believed this allotment was the best possible outcome for his Cherokee people. With his term over, Chief Buffington returned home to Vanita, where he was mayor until 1917. He remained in Vanita until his death on February 11, 1938, at age 83. After the devastation of allotment, the Cherokee Nation government continued to face repressive federal policies that interfered with tribal elections. And because of this constant interference and the perceptions it carried, 
Chief Buffington became known for a time as the last chief of the Cherokees. <laughs>